Hey everybody, welcome to another video. Welcome back if you've been here already. Thanks for watching. I am Aaliyah Langley. Let's talk about season six of Love is Blind. The first six episodes dropped earlier this week. Um, I finished all six um, and there's another, I think maybe another six more to go. But let's talk about episodes one through six, give a little recap of everything. So quickly, if you don't know what Love is Blind is or you've never watched it, um, let me give a quick explanation of what's happening here. I imagine most people watching this will have watched it before, but just, you know, just to give a quick recap. So essentially Love is Blind is this show that started February of 2020, like a perfect time. I remember in the, when the pandemic started a month later, there's all these kind of reality shows coming out um, and people were just watching all types of reality TV shows and Love is Blind was one of those, certainly. That's how I started um, on it. Um, They've had six seasons so far in the USA, and um, they've had in Atlanta, Chicago, Dallas, Houston, Seattle, slash Portland, and this season is in Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, the singles are from there. You have 15 women and 15 men from the same metropolitan area. Like I said, this season from Charlotte, uh, North Carolina. Um, these people come together. These singles come together. They date in something called pods for 10 days. It's essentially it's where the blind comes in. You can't see each other. All you can do is hear each other over a speaker. Um, they start off kind of speed dating, you date everyone there, and then eventually you get kind of selective, like who do you connect with the most, who do you want to just talk to. From there on, you can decide to get engaged. You can do it in 10 days, or you can do it sooner than 10 days. It kind of just varies whenever you're ready, you can just propose. After the proposal, you do this thing kind of a reveal where you see each other for the first time. Um, that comes with its own thing. Sometimes people expect something else. Sometimes, you know, people are surprised at what they're looking at, but it's what it is. This is your fiance now. After you're engaged, you go down to a resort. All the engaged couples go down to a resort and you basically get a first chance to be with each other in person. You get a chance to be physically intimate if you choose to. You also meet the other engaged couples and that's where some more kind of drama comes in because these could be some of your exes or people that you maybe considered partnering up with. Um, after that, you're there for a week. After that, you move, move back to the metropolitan area you came from, but you don't live in your own house. Everyone lives in the same apartment complex probably easier for filming in this that way it's just we can all just get here together you live with each other for three weeks and in those three weeks you can meet family friends you can go see what their home looks like you can kind of get used to how they live what kind of what do they do for fun what are their habits like are they clean type of you know that kind of thing um, and then they're also planning the wedding during this three weeks and then after it's a four week total I think well actually a little more than four weeks four weeks since you get engaged essentially um, you get Go to a wedding and you can choose to say I do or I don't. If you say I do, you both say I do, then great, you're married, you can run off. And if you one says I don't or both say I don't, then it's over. And there you go. That's a quick summary of Love is Blind. Let's get to this season. Like I said, this season's in Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, episodes one through six, there have only been out now. Like I said, 30 singles. Out of the 30 singles, we got five engaged couples. I'm actually happy that it's five couples this time. Last season, it was only like two engaged couples or three, but then like, Second one fizzled out when they were on in the resort, which we kind of expected, but anyway. Also, another thing with <laughs> with this is kind of, there's like a pressure, I feel like, to watch the show quickly because they drop six episodes at once. They're all like an hour length. And it's like, okay, I have to get hurry up because there's so many spoilers around on online and things. I kind of like more so when you can only drop one or two episodes. That way everyone's kind of on the same page in terms of like live tweeting and things like that. The pressure works because I finished it in under a week, so crazy. So let's start. The first couple I'm going to start with is Amy and Johnny. Um, they are, I'm starting with them because they're not really much drama. They're kind of just like this little, this sweet little couple. Um, so to start, Amy's from Puerto Rico, uh, but she moved to Charlotte at some point. Johnny is uh, a white boy from the United States. Um, Amy's only dated Latino men, so there's a little bit of something that's maybe going to come up there. Like she has to kind of get used to dating um, a man like Johnny and there's that kind of thing but overall they just really seem like a sweet um, kind of unlikely match but they're cute and I wish them well I'm starting with them just to get them out the way because there's some drama coming with the rest of them and they honestly are like the least problematic and just like cute in the corner my next couple I'm gonna do is Brittany and Kenneth so they're well okay so they're a couple they're a biracial couple Kenneth is black Brittany is white um, they both seem to be very religious and very like you know god-centered and that kind of thing which is nice for them they connect on that kind of right away in the pods but there's some questions come there because kenneth is his first time dating a white woman i'm not sure britney specified if she's dated a black man before um and there's kind of just some stuff with that i remember in a 
right before they met or right after they met, Brittany said something, Kenneth identifies as black. I remember right away I was like, identifies as black? He doesn't identify as black, he's black. And I saw some people online saying kind of the same thing, like, I don't know what's happening there. Like, I feel like it's going to be a little bit of both of them in some aspects getting used to each other. Um, Kenneth was speaking to AD, another um, person I'm going to speak about next, at the party where all the um, engaged couples were mingling. And he was saying, you know, it's my first time dating a white woman before. You know, I'm fine with it, but I, I feel like when I get back to Charlotte, I'm going to have to maybe me adjust but also maybe like friends and family have to adjust to this person I'm, I'm bringing into their lives because they obviously had not been used to it before in terms of his romantic partners so it's just going to be kind of interesting there and I think kind of as well I think Brittany for me so far has given me kind of one of those you know almost one of those I don't see color I don't see race type of thing which you know it doesn't that doesn't he's black so <laughs> you have to see it and you see it so anyway overall I think they seem sweet I think they seem sweet I think the race difference is going to cause some potential like hang not hang ups but just things to get over things to discuss and talk about but I think overall I think they could um kind of make it out there like I said they both are really connected on the religion aspect of things and overall they seem kind of just like similar to Amy and Johnny honestly they seem kind of sweet cute and you know we don't know if they will make it but I I wish them well all right next couple I'm going to talk about this these next three couples all kind of have a level of something going on um, this first couple was AD and Clay. Um, AD and Clay. All right, so, oh, where do I begin with them? AD, first she, I'll start with her. First she had two kind of people she was speaking with at first. This guy named Matthew. People have comparing, comparing him to Joe from You, the TV show. Yeah, he was giving kind of, kind of weird, um, stalkerish, I don't know, strange vibe. She was connecting with him, which was kind of like, where was this coming from? And then there's Clay, both being black. So they were like, you know, had a lot of banter, lots of laughs, which was nice. The Matthew thing fizzled out. Essentially with Matthew, he was basically telling two girls the same thing. Um, and like, it was really hurting AD because he was talking about her dad who had just passed saying, I want to ask him for your hand in marriage, which first of all, you should be asking the mother as well, but that's another subject. Just, just weird. And essentially he, the other girl he was speaking to left because she was upset that he was saying the same thing to the woman. And then Matthew said, I'm going to leave too. I'm going to go find Amber. And people were like, oh my gosh, again with the Joe thing from you. Like, hope Amber's all right out there because he seemed a little bit, you know, whatever. So moving on to AD and Clay now. So they're together. But Clay for me in the beginning was kind of in the pods when they ha haven't seen each other yet. He was strange. When they were just talking, he said, you know, physical attraction for me is so important and I, I have to have, I have to be attracted to my partner or it's not going to work. And even if we have a great emotional connection, I need to know, I need to have it be great. And then AD was sitting there kind of like, so what do you, what kind of, and she was, she, he was like, oh, well, you know, I like, I like good lips. I like a butt, you know, things like that. He said, it sounds bad, but you know, and he was like, if that doesn't click for me, then I, you know, we're also, regardless of the emotional connection, it's not going to work on my end. And AD was just like, oh, you know this is not and she's saying like we're on love is blind why are you trying to ask me about physical attributes why are you like we're on love is blind and there's been times in the past where we've had that from men it's mostly been men i feel like who've been basically trying to ask like oh let me guess what you look like and it's just like weird like why do you sign up for the show if you're going to try to like figure out who the person you're speaking to is before you do the reveal if you happen to get engaged just strange so she was kind of off him for a few days or a few i don't know they only have 10 days maybe a few hours um, and then the Matthew thing fits out kind of around the same time. So they end up coming back together. Clay said he had this whole like emotional maturity thing come to him and said, it's not really important to me actually. And I just like you for you and you know, whatever. He also, he was so mad when he found out Matthew was the other guy she was talking to. He was kind of like, we are not even on the same level, which I agree with. And so there was this whole thing. Eventually they overcame everything and got engaged to the reveal. Um, AD is beautiful. And this is something we're going to speak about as well. She has a great figure. And this is some, um, something that seems to have come up in their couple and also other couples as well, which is kind of just strange. Um, but moving on with AD and Clay, though, when they were in the, the Dominican Republic talking just together, um, you know, Clay had said before, like, how great AD's body looks and things like that. And also, like, he was saying, I want to make sure I cherish her for more than just her body. But they were speaking, like, having drinks. And she was saying something like, oh, I don't want to have this pasta or something because, you know, I count my calories or I have in the past and I want to be careful um, and he was like, why do you have to do that? You know, you'll, you'll be fine. And she was trying to say to him, men's and women's bodies are different. 
which is just the the the, tr- the truth. And he was like, yeah, but I'm sure if you had this, like, you'd be fine. You could, you know, just get get past it. Um, he said, I don't like go to the gym that much, and I kind of eat what I want. And she was just like, okay. Um, and she asked him. She said, if I maybe like um, was losing my shape a little bit, would, what would, how would would you say for me to get in the gym or whatever? He's like, yeah, I'd say, babe, you're not looking as good anymore. You should get back in the gym. Strange, like what? I and she was saying, okay, with I, I feel like when you say it that way, it's kind of like you know that's like awful rude. And he was like, yeah, but if I stay that way, I will get you determined to go to the gym if, I, if I'm a little bit hard on you. Just, again, a little bit icky. Like, what are you talking about? And then to continue, she was saying, okay, well, if we have kids one day, I'm going to have a big belly and, you know, all this. And he was like, yeah, and I'll, I'll be in the gym every day with you. We'll make sure you, you stay looking nice. Just like, okay, this is the guy who had this whole emotional thing he said, which how do you have an emotional, like, maturity growth in, like, three days? Um, and again, trying to talk about, oh, I'm going to make sure you stay in the gym, make sure you stay hot. I feel like with them, I feel like he's still very focused on, like, having a partner who looks great and having someone who he's so attracted to, but not necessarily thinking about, like, everything else that kind of, I feel like that's, like, the number one thing for him, essentially. Having someone who looks hot. Not saying that physical attraction is not important, but the way he, speaking in that conversation and also in the pods and also little comments he's made is really giving to me that it's, like, you know, if she if she wasn't hot, then I wouldn't be with her. Even even what he said in the pods about how he had a whole emotional maturity thing. I feel like if AD wasn't the one on the other side of that door that he saw and she, you know, and she looks well, I feel like he would probably be like, eh, I'm going to back out of this. Either he'd back out of it when they were on their low engagement moon or sometime before. Because I feel like for him, he's he was just kind of, you know, saying something just so he can get to the next step. So there's just something going on there. I feel like overall... I saw someone say that AD and Clay are meant to be sex partners. And <laughs> I honestly agree. Um, just because, again, I think of what I said about Clay. And it's kind of sad for AD because I feel like AD is really looking for something more and really offering up a lot. And I'm, I'm sure she's used to maybe people ogling her, people complimenting her on her body and things like that, or, or men especially, or even just other people out and about. So, But it doesn't seem like there's, at this point, that there's like so much past just that initial attraction for me just don't clay is a good looking guy as well but i feel like there's not too much past that especially on clay's end at this point we'll see what happens in the next six kind of episodes or so but that's my opinion for now um next couple we have laura and jeremy now laura and jeremy so jeremy was in a love triangle with laura and this girl sarah ann this girl sarah ann just mention her quickly she's like she said she's conservative she said she's like a patriot and she has fake lips. That's was my description I wrote down for her. Um, and then Laura. Um, he was talking to each of them for a while. He was opening up to Sarah Ann on some things like he lost his father. And he was saying, like, I think his father's buried buried in Florida. And, um, you know, if we get engaged, get married, I want you to come down to Florida with me and, like, sit by the grave. Sometimes I'd go down there and just talk for a bit, which I feel like is not so uncommon to do when you've lost someone. Um, and that was something he hadn't said to anyone before. He, people knew his father died, but, you know, he hadn't talked in detail about the whole, you know, sitting at the grave. That's such a special place for me, all these things. So for a while, I think some people were thinking Sarah Ann may, may have been the one, but he ended up going with Laura, which is fine. Um, I honestly don't really remember too much about them in the pods, but in the Dominican Republic, when they're having the engaged couples all together, Jeremy is sitting around with A.D. and Clay and then another guy, and they're sitting and he's... They're just talking normal, whatever. And then he says, yeah, Laura told me, A.D., I should um, bean dip you. You would know what that means. And A.D.'s like, what? He said, yeah, I should bean dip me. And Clay's sitting there. A.D.'s on Clay's lap. And Clay's like, what? And he's like, yeah, it's like a, a boob slap. It's like a pattern a pattern boob slap. He said, she said she did it to you. And A.D.'s like, oh. And they're kind of like chuckling and whatever. But it's, we can tell it's like, what what's going on here? This like, why are we talking about some other woman like, or we're going to just go ahead and jokingly slap her boobs around. Like, yeah, my, my friend from the pods did it, but, like, you're just some random guy I just met. And, like, what, you know, I don't even know you. Just very strange. Very strange. Um, so that whole thing happened, and AD got up and was said she's going to go get a drink. And then eventually she went over to Laura, who's sitting with some other women, and said, Laura, why would you say that to Jeremy? Tell him to, like, bean dip me. Like, you did that, but, like, that's not really funny. And she's saying, especially not for Clay, Clay's sitting there with me and he's talking and you're talking about some other man trying to like grab my boob. Like what's going on? And 
Jeremy apologized to Clay and said, oh, it was just a joke. I'm sorry. I hope I didn't upset her or anything like that. He looked over, saw them talking, said, I might have upset her a little bit, but I hope not. And Clay was like, I'll reel her in. Don't worry. Like, Clay for me? I don't know. Anyways, so there's, there's all that going on. Um, but then when Eddie's talking to Laura, Laura's just like deflecting and saying, why would he even bring that up? It was just a joke. Why would he even bring that up? Like, obviously he wouldn't do that and yada, yada, yada. But she, again, was not, didn't even apologize to AD. was kind of just like, yeah, whatever. Like, it was just me saying it for funny. And AD was trying to say, okay, but I'm thinking about how it made me feel, how it potentially made my fiancé feel. That isn't, and also in general, why are you trying to joke about someone grabbing my boob? It's just very, like, it's not, it's not. So that was the whole thing that kind of happened. And I feel like with that, I feel like Laura and Jeremy are just not really meshing. And, like, they're just, like, and just in general, I feel like this is going to be a theme, something I'm going to bring up in a minute, too, about kind of the objectification. I'm feeling a little bit of 80s body. Like, I feel like people are so hyper-focused on and fixated on it. Like, let her live. She's just trying to be. And I'm going to talk about that in another, in another couple in a minute. But it's kind of just like an overall sense of, like, just weirdness coming off. Overall, for them, I think that they're, they're just not the right match. It's actually in the preview, they showed there's a time when all the people who aren't engage meet kind of the other singles who maybe didn't get engaged um jeremy gets to meet sarah ann for the first time that girl that conservative girl that she you know i spoke about before um they meet for the first time at one of these gatherings and then it shows laura confronting jeremy saying you hung back until 5 a.m to talk to sarah ann and jeremy's like yeah so i feel like they're either jeremy's gonna maybe try to get back with sarah ann or just in, in general i don't think him and laura are gonna match i don't think their personalities really mesh i don't think I think it's going to end end before the altar or at, or at the altar. I don't really see that, you know, shaping out. And the thing about having these other singles who you don't get engaged to, like I said, everyone's from the same metropolitan area. So it's very easy to, like, it's not like you have to, like, jump over hoops to, like, be with someone who you met in the pods but maybe didn't initially get engaged to. You live 10 minutes from me, maybe, because we're all in Chicago. We're all in Charlotte this season. We're all right here. Like, why not just... You know date it's easy to like they're they're on your doorstep in in some sense and other than like some of these other shows reality shows like the bachelor or too hot to handle some things like that where people live different countries different cities different states and it's some so much harder here it's very easy it's very accessible to date people that you've met already and to leave your partner potentially so yeah i don't think it's gonna work out for laura and jeremy but you know god bless them we'll see um next and final couple engaged couple is Chelsea and Jimmy. Now, Chelsea and Jimmy. Lordy, lordy. I... Okay, let me start with... Okay, Chelsea was talking to Trevor, this guy with this mullet, this kind of bodybuilder. Seems like this kind of big, tough guy, but seems like such a sweetheart, honestly, when you actually um, hear from him and speak to him. She was between Tre Trevor and Jimmy. Obviously, she obviously um, overall went with Jimmy. Trevor, like I said, seemed like a teddy bear. So there's only not much to kind of go over there. It didn't work out with Chelsea. But Jimmy was in between Jessica and Chelsea. He, like I said, chose Chelsea. But Jessica, is Jessica is a single mother. Um, she has a 10-year-old daughter that she had when she was 18, I think. And Chelsea has been married before. When Jessica told Jimmy that about the daughter, he was kind of just like taking the news in. was kind of like, okay, thinking about I have to be a father essentially or a father figure if I'm going to get engaged to this person kind of immediately. Um... He didn't immediately shut anything down or like say like it's not gonna work for me but it was kind of <laughs> ironic because later in that same day chelsea was talking to him on their little date that they had and that was the day she shared with him that she had been married before and when he said that he was just like oh my gosh i just got news about someone else i'm sorry to bring up someone else but someone else having this you know this big news for me to take in like can we talk about this later can we change the subject and chelsea was kind of like oh my gosh like i just opened up to you about my divorce that's really tough. So she was upset about his reaction. He was just was overwhelmed for that day. So for a little bit, it seemed like it was maybe going to fizzle out because like that was really a bad reaction. But they ended up kind of getting back together. Jessica was opening up to Jimmy, but Jimmy was going to open up back, like not in a meaningful, substantial way. They had an argument and she said, okay, let's get back together tomorrow and like talk about it some more or whatever. But right now we need to just like take space from each other or something like that. He went from there to a little bit later that same day to Chelsea he was arguing with Jessica saying, I'm not going to get, I'm not going to say I love you. I'm not going to make any promises because I don't want to make sure, I want to make sure that I don't hurt anybody here. He went to Chelsea later that same day and said, Chelsea, I love you. 
And Chelsea had already heard I love you from Trevor. I uh, haven't said anything back. She was stealing between the two of them. It was kind of like he, from there, the decision had been made that he was going to be basically be with Chelsea. And it was the timing was just weird because he had just argued with Jessica that same day. They hadn't ended anything. They just said like, stop talking for now. We'll come back later. Chelsea comes into all the women live together in like two different sides of whatever like building warehouse they're in. She's kind of smiling, but she's quiet. She says to one of her friends there, he told me he loved me. She doesn't like yelled out. Some people come in from with exciting news and they kind of yell out. They're like, you know, they can't hide it at all. The friend goes then to tell Jessica immediately that Chelsea just got told she that Jimmy loves her. And Jessica starts to cry because she knows, oh my gosh, like Jimmy basically is not picking me anymore. Um, and this is how it happened. Like we just had this argument and he's going to go run to tell someone else he loves them. Like, oh my gosh. Jessica and Jimmy basically come back together, have an argument. And Jessica basically tells him this whole thing. Like when you figure out what you missed out on, you're going to need your EpiPen to like catch your breath type of thing. Like this kind of like speech, like, oh, how dare you type of thing, you know, do this to me and all this stuff. Um, really kind of dramatic, but like also like, you know, you go girl. Um, and they officially end. And like essentially, Jimmy and Chelsea get together. Um, Trevor's left sad and did not expect to be without, to be the loser in the situation. It was really kind of good. Like he was asking Chelsea good questions. Like, okay, why did you say this? If I spoke to you first before Jimmy today, would you have maybe picked me? And I didn't expect this at all. And like, just very good. I was happy for him. He didn't like Sometimes I feel like when you're in situations like that, you can kind of just shut down immediately and you don't want to hear anything. But he was good. Like, I have you right now. Let me ask you these questions now in the moment instead of having to like wait and like sit on it for like weeks. Before the reveal though, um, Chelsea said to Jimmy earlier in the season that she gets mistaken for the celebrity all the time. People say I look like the celebrity or whatever. And the whole way she like, it was weird. She brought up like, do you look like any celebrities? Like this whole thing, like obviously she was trying to bring this up. And she said kind of in a coy way, like, yeah, they say I look like this person. And he was like, who? And she was like, yeah, it's like MGK's wife or something. And Jimmy's like, Megan Fox? You look like Megan Fox? And she's like, I say, people say that because I have like light eyes and dark hair, but I don't see it. But yeah, they say that about me. The minute she brought this up, I was like, one, why are you bringing this up? Two, why are you trying to play coy? Like, oh, I don't know who Megan Fox is by saying, it was MGK's wife or something like, girl, you know it's Megan Fox. If someone said you look like someone who's maybe an uglier celebrity or something like that, you wouldn't bring them up and say that, oh, they say they think I look like this person. Insert like a, well, I guess, you know, what is ugly? Everyone's beautiful in their own way. But you know what I mean. You wouldn't bring, you wouldn't bring up Megan Fox being a lookalike you get mistaken for if it wasn't Megan Fox. You know who Megan Fox is. Let's be serious. Come on now. But, so, that whole thing was weird. But two, why are you bringing that up? You don't look like Megan Fox at all. And I know you said you don't believe it, but if you don't believe it, why look it up? Because you clearly have seen what she looks like. You know what you look like. You don't look alike. Both beautiful in their own way, but you do not look like Megan Fox in the slightest. There was even some people saying Jessica looks like Megan Fox more so than Chelsea does. I'm not saying that that's, you know, that that's for Jimmy, whatever. It's just why you bring up Megan Fox in the situation. You don't look like her. Stop with the lies. Stop. And you're trying to bring it up for no reason but then to get someone's hopes up um, that they're going to have Megan Fox on the other side of the door. Um, so essentially they do the reveal, they, they meet, they, they seem to get on all right, but Jimmy in some capacity looks a little bit uncomfortable I think because in his head, yeah Chelsea said I don't look like Megan, I don't believe I look like Megan Fox, but she said people mistake me for her. So even in his like his little VT he did, he said like yeah she definitely lied to me. She said she looked like Megan Fox and she does not. And he was like, I, I still think she's beautiful, but she definitely lied. Ultimately, there's just been some people who think that with them, that Jimmy picked Chelsea overall because she didn't have kids. And that in some aspect, it would be easier in terms of not having to, again, be the father figure kind of right away if he were to be with Jessica. I don't really know there, but I feel like certainly it was the kind of the first moment of conflict with Jessica. He said, okay, we're, we're going to pick Chelsea. Maybe he was thinking about the kids thing, maybe he was thinking about all types of things, but that's the route they, they went on. Also, when they did their reveal, um, he, Jimmy said to Chelsea, yeah, I almost went home this morning, like before meeting her, he just almost just ditched the whole thing and went home. And Chelsea was like, okay, like that's not really great to hear. I don't want to hear that you just proposed to me and now you're saying, like in the pods, now you're saying, the day you're supposed to meet me, you almost just went home and said, forget her. Like, ugh. Just, 
just bad start with them. Bad, bad start. It feel it feels like. I mean, it, the can they seemed like they were getting on right when they were meeting him, but some of his faces were looking like you know, oh my gosh. I think a little bit of the Megan Fox theme was playing in his head. Um, but I don't know. Um, in the Dominican Republic, um, like they were lying in bed, and she asked him, "When you saw me, what was the first kind of thing you you saw with me or like liked about me?" And he said, "Like your big white teeth, your big square teeth." Just not even like your smile, your just your big teeth. Again, just it's just not giving. But moving on back to kind of a little bit of the AD of people objectifying her body a bit. All the couples are together in Dominican Republic. They're all talking, chatting, whatever. They've been there for X amount of time. And Jimmy's talking with Chelsea and he just goes, respectfully, that woman is he's looking at AD. He said, Respectfully, that woman is stacked. They're looking right at AD. They both look at AD. And then Chelsea turns and goes, AD. Um, just yells out to everybody kind of around, AD, Jimmy says you're, you're beautiful, you're stacked. And she said, how do you get a butt like that? And AD's like, oh, you know, laughing, chuckling, like, you know, discipline and prayer, you know, discipline and prayer. And she's like, yeah, wow. Um, and Jimmy's like, you put me on blast just now, oh my gosh. Jimmy goes over to AD and kind of like, says, I'm sorry, I was just trying, I was trying to say it respectfully, whatever, I just, you know, yada, yada. Um, leave Chelsea standing there kind of like by the bar-ish. Um, he starts talking to AD. They're talking just the two of them. Chelsea gets a drink. She's kind of like right kind of behind them ish. A um, couple couple steps away. Gets a drink. Someone else comes up. They, she gets a drink with her. She's starting to feel a little bit uncomfortable or like upset. Because maybe they're just talking for long or I don't even know. She moves and goes. They're, they're having this normal conversation. Not anything crazy. She moves and goes sit to sits to another chair. The other girl follows her. Um, and she's again just feeling uncomfortable a little bit. Or feeling like why is Jimmy... Like, I don't know, like, why is Jimmy talking to her so much? Or, like, why is he maybe upset that I said that about her? Why is he even saying these things about her? Which I agree. I feel like if you think another woman is beautiful, I think everyone has eyes. Everyone has their own. Everyone can see someone and, and see attraction there to some degree or sees, um, appreciate beauty in somebody. I feel like the word stacked, though, is kind of like, that's not necessarily beauty. That's talking about she's stacked, like, again, kind of with... Some things like just thinking about what she looks like, thinking about that figure that she has, which again is really great. Um, but like, it's not like, it's not necessarily saying it in a respectful way by saying someone's stacked. That's not like your partner, I feel like, is, is just strange a bit. Chelsea was upset, not at Jimmy being disrespectful to AD, but her being disrespectful to her. Which it should, if anything, it should have been a little bit of both and like maybe don't disrespect AD by just, you know, talking about how stacked she is. But also maybe don't tell your fiance, look at this woman over there and right next to us who's so hot and so whatever. Um, then also, but I feel like Chelsea wasn't worried about that because she also was objectifying AD in some way by saying, oh, like, how'd you get your butt like that? And you're so, and she was kind of using her own um, verbiage to kind of describe AD. So it was kind of just strange. Jimmy was going around, seemed happy the whole night. He was telling everyone how happy he was. He was the happiest person there, all these things. They get back to the room um, the hotel room and Chelsea says to him like I was upset with you like you weren't coming up to me throughout the night everyone else was kind of talking to their couples and kissing and hugging on them and I felt like very alone and sad and Jimmy was saying I feel like I was coming up to you and I don't have to be next to you all the time but I mean I feel like I was hugging and kissing you you know enough and I told everyone how happy I was with you and how happy I you know all these things and they kind of just butting heads going in circles and circles and Chelsea kept saying to him but do you do you really love me do you really love me? She kept saying it over and over and over again. That's kind of where the episode ended. And then we saw like the previews going forward of everything else. And I feel like with them, I feel like overall, I feel like the insecurity with that Chelsea has, that she has a very big insecurity is really going to mess them up and it's going to like quicken their demise. Especially when you think of the other people involved, Jessica and Trevor, who we, we see in the previews that I don't, I don't think they're going to work. I think they're kind of doomed from the start. I think they have so many things to maybe get over and it just, it just doesn't seem great. Um, and part of that is in the preview, shortly after that argument we saw, in the preview we saw, again, all this people, engaged couples and people who didn't get engaged meet each other. Jimmy's talking to Jessica and says to Jessica, yeah, in the real world, you're still my number one. So again, awkward. And then we cut to a clip right after then of Chelsea and Jimmy arguing and Chelsea saying, I know you slept with her. Well, you didn't say slept with her. She said, effed. I'm not going to swear on this channel. I, I know you effed her. I It could be about Jessica, but I also feel like Jessica wouldn't do that because I feel like she wouldn't be the type of person to, after getting dumped by someone essentially, I feel like she would, I mean, I don't know the girl from anybody, but I feel like by the way she ended it with him, that little speech she gave, I feel like she wouldn't sleep with him 
after he was like engaged to someone else after she got dumped by him in like a, a very weird way but who knows I mean we'll see and then also Chelsea's talking to Trevor on the clip and saying you know I still love you and things like that and he's like I know so I think with both of them on both levels they're just like there's other options out there and like I said you're all in the same city maybe it's you should go that way you know anyway Chelsea, Chelsea I think should have been with Trevor anyway. he seemed like such a sweetheart and I want nothing but good things for him um, but I don't, I, overall, I think the insecurity of Chelsea and just some of the other things with them, it's just going to make them not really last. Um, and I, I think, again, they'll be ones who end at the altar or just before the altar. So, yeah, overall, that is Love is Blind episodes one through six, my little recap. Like I said, there's about six or so episodes left to come. They're going to come out every Wednesday. And then also after the, like, the weddings episodes, I'll have like a, an update of them having like a reunion. And this show is filmed months or even a year in advance, so the people who have been with each other, if they, if anyone made it, they've been with each other for probably a year at this point. And when they film the reunion, it will be like after everyone has watched it, so they can kind of maybe chime in a little bit on, you know, their ideas. So it's, it'll be kind of interesting to see like from later to see where everyone kind of ended up, do they actually make it together or not, and, and also what more drama comes um, this season. Um, but there's just a lot there. I feel like it's it's a strong, decent, decently strong start. Um, I said I feel like Love is Blind are continuing to try to replicate what they had with Lauren and Cameron in terms of a couple who connected right away. They're from season one, the Atlanta season. They were this biracial couple who immediately like got together and everyone still really um, you know, likes them, which for them, that kind of thing. Um, but I feel like to some level they have a lot of things happening, a lot of different dramas in different kind of ways. Some like really drama that can like last, some things that are kind of like, quick little little tips that kind of go up and down, but lots of different people involved, lots of different storylines to cover, and we're interested to see how it turns out. So, Love is Blind, one through six, recap. If you have any thoughts, if you've seen the episodes, have you seen anything, thank you again for watching. Um, if you have any thoughts on Love is Blind this season, comment them below. Who do you think is gonna last? Do you think these couples are gonna maybe ditch to go to someone else that may be dumped? Like either Chelsea or Jimmy, or even um, Jeremy with um, Sarah Ann. Give me your thoughts. Talk to me in the comments. Tell me what you're thinking. Um, yeah, I'll talk to you guys later.